like to really really thank you guys to yeah. bring out clarity in my goals mm-hmm. so once we interacted with you i think i got to understand a very bigger perspective to look at things and uh, individual that i connected with uh, with your team for the mock were really really good brought a lot of insights and a with a very varied perspective <laughs> Hi everyone this is Kyu Shranjan the founder of Management Master we are a boutique admission consulting firm for the top MBA programs around the world and today we have with us Shivam Khetha Shivam worked with us to apply to ISB and is joining ISB very soon so let's hear it from him hi shivam it's great to have you here could you give us a brief introduction about where are you coming from and what have you been doing in your previous career so sure. uh, hi Piyush thank you for having me here uh, so i am Shivam Khetan from Nepal uh i have been out uh, not been in nepal since like my early childhood so i've been in india across, across my education period uh, after my education in uh, in my undergrad i went for a year at de shaw did a bit of hedge, a hedge fund in worked a bit on the hedge fund industry then i went back to my family business uh, with an un- understanding to maybe grow it and to diversify it and uh, post that i realized that maybe there was some uh, of possibilities that i was not able to tap on just because of my localized knowledge of aspects of things and maybe to understand how i could go into maybe forward integration to some aspect of things so uh, to that aspect i think uh, i chose to join a business school and uh, i think this idea got a little more clarified working with piyush as to what i could do further in my life and maybe uh, opening because having worked with lots of profiles piyush gave me that idea that this is also something i could do and how i could maybe not only think of uh, an mba program as a backup but also as something that i could really add value and get something really in return from so uh, that was a good perspective and a good insight uh, from piyush so right. over to you thanks thanks for sharing that shivam but could you help us understand a little bit like what led you to decide that you know an mba was the way forward way forward for you right uh, could you just walk us through that decision making aspect of it e- when you reached out to us you already knew that you wanted to go for an mba right right so what what led you to come to that point uh personally i am an individual who does not really want to know things from a very holistic just from the superficial point of view so i could have either gone ahead just with hiring a consultant in my business aspect of things as to how i could grow it but going to an mba is learning things yourself and knowing things yourself and then growing it so mm-hmm. i am a little bit of that school of thought so uh, that was my idea of how to grow my business further and uh, i could have grown it by adding little more products to my portfolio in terms of a trading thing that we do but that was not the push that i was really seeking to get so working with my family business also i could have explored some options in nepal maybe talking to people i could have understood what is really the pulse of business in nepal but getting a different ex- aspect of things from an mba perspective and talking to my cousins who've done mbas in good colleges before i realized that this is really a good push and could give me a platform not only to develop in the business aspect of things but also to the personality aspect of things since my family has been into uh, edu- very focused on education like my father and my uh, my uncles all have been the, have done their education in boarding school they realize the value of education and the cost that is associated with it so once you realize that they were also very up with the idea that uh, i f- should not ever think that mba is not that i am going to do post my education and just family business is some something that you can do so education right. was all at the forefront of their discussions too right so so if i understand correctly uh, what what you mean to say is you wanted to really first you know not just do it from a practical perspective but also you wanted to get the theoretical basics right of why of of how to grow your business you know should you be coming right. back to your family business and what are the things what are the levers what are the strategies available to you from a theoretical standpoint so that you can right. go back and then practically implement them in your business right 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 that that makes that makes a lot of sense now obviously when it comes to b school applications uh, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously the test that you have to prepare for and gmat or gre these are the top tests uh, both the tests are accepted by isp uh, so why did you take the gmat and how did you prepare for the gmat alongside working or you know could you just tell us a bit about how did you prepare that uh, so i tied up with one of the consulting companies uh, for preparation of gmat 
jamboree if i can name that uh, mm-hmm. and uh, that they really helped me with the with the course structure that they had so i am an individual after getting into work i believe a lot of individuals feel a problem to get into a structured way of studying for a competitive exams because the syllabus is not like a very uh, limited syllabus and uh, how much to how much is enough to get a score is also not something that can people people can understand so i think jambori had to that accord and uh, not only just jambori uh, i spoke to some of my friends who had already done gmat before starting trying to study with them and maybe understanding the different materials at hand i think uh, i chose gmat as an option because there were a lot of contact points that i could get reference from and maybe a little bit of uh, books and maybe understanding how i can get the resource material from so that that's why right. choosing gmat so what would you say was the key thing that helped you crack your gmat or or let me put it another way uh, one advice that you would have that all gmat aspirants should do when they are preparing for their you know for the test uh, know your strengths definitely and even if you don't when once you realize something that that is really not playing to your strengths if you work on it gmat is easier to crack that way i mean if someone doesn't even know english to start it could be a good start for him even to learn gmat because it's a very a uh, mechanical aspect of things to learn in a gmat like uh, in maybe a sentence correction things it's mm-hmm. difficult for some individuals personally i felt it a little difficult because i had to unlearn some things that i knew that i thought was correct then learn the right aspect of things and then while answering them i had to fight my basic instinct to maybe go back to the initially learned aspect of things right so you can learn it in a very mechanical manner and crack it if you work hard i mean Right. i think it's more right. about putting the hours regularly rather than knowing the stuff uh, from before all right all right so it so makes makes a lot of sense now when it comes to applying to the business schools i think one thing that you were always very very clear on in all our discussions was that you only wanted to apply to indian b schools right so uh, could you help us walk through why did you want to apply to indian b schools like isb i think you also had an admit from another uh, b school in india right so could you yes. just walk us through that decision point how did you choose where did you want to apply and why focus only on the indian schools uh, okay so uh, i initially i was looking at different base b schools because the investment in terms of, uh, of studying is little bit more uh, so i evaluated not only indian b schools i evaluated the south asian b schools so i was thinking about nus to uh, colleges in singapore and hong kong too but then i realized that maybe the uh, because mba is partially also dri- uh, driving networks and i think if i would need to work in the nepal and the indian space of things in the geography of things i think networking here would be much more valuable to me and understanding that isb would give me the same networking within a year so the one year program was a major major plus point why isb one was something that i could choose or uh, talking about the other b school i got through i also received from im cozy code and i was quite happy with that uh, too uh, seeing the placement results that they had in the recent years but again their call, uh, their course structure was two years and yeah. uh, i realized that if i invest two years into it maybe at the same cost to going to isb i have lost one year of earning and one year of learning in industry framework right so after coming from an a b school i'd like to maybe experience in the short to mid term or maybe even in the longer term maybe 5 to 7 years of maybe understanding how the industry works and why mm-hmm. where i need to proceed further with my family business so right. i have already earned one year advantage with isb going ahead so that yeah. was one aspect why isb was really one good choice personally apart from this i think one of my family members had run it from isb like long back when isb mm-hmm. didn't have like that big of a stature and now he realized that the networking that he has because of isb was unparalleled uh, and talking about him he already has like a very good business backup you know, or a background that he could have that net level of networking but isb still gave him the platform and with a networking connect to really make him big make him crack himself in a, in the market that big right so i think right, that, right. that's why that, that makes a lot of sense so if i th- i say one as you pointed out the network that isb provided you uh, or, or will provide you and the second yeah. thing that you mentioned was you know compared to the two year mba programs it allows you to get back into the job market faster and obviously the cost is slightly a bit higher for isb but then you make up for that through that 
extra earning period and at the same time getting that industry exposure right so so that that makes a lot of sense and it's a very logical way of looking at things and pretty pretty solid i think as well so one thing what would you say is is the one thing that you are really looking forward to at isp uh so one thing that i really un- really understood about the diversity quotient at isb with the with the several e meets and one of the physical meets was that people are really really coming from a very very diverse background so last night i was talking to someone with a with a degree in philosophy and with uh, policy making and we were discussing nepal's policy structure of which she knew more than me being in nepal it was something of a good perspective also that because maybe it was not really my field of study or my yeah. area of interest but knowing that individuals would be there from a very wide perspective and something i that, that i can really learn from yeah. understanding that people with age of experience would be there uh, would there be about 4 to 8 even to 12 years of experience and me who would be more like a fresher to them maybe 2 3 years of experience i think it will be so much so much to learn and any area of interest that i practically have would be maybe catered to just by the Absolutely. peer group learning Yeah, so, and absolutely. the faculty is just an advantage i feel yeah absolutely because i think i think for most of the mba programs uh, like isb or the international counter you know the counterpart programs internationally you know the peer learning experience is such a huge part of the mba experience yeah. that i think i think you're absolutely bang on point that the diversity that you will get in terms of you know not just the work experience but the academic backgrounds the work backgrounds the cultural backgrounds that people come from that's going to be huge huge right now the the final aspect of the applications or not the final but a major major aspect of the applications is working on the essays right? right and and that's where you also reached out to us for help regarding right so could you tell us a bit about uh, how did we help you or how did we add value to you in terms of your essays uh, and and what would be your advice to future candidates you know who are preparing for their applications how should they approach the essays uh, based on your experience right so uh, i mean first i'd like to really really thank you guys <laughs> for for all the help uh, we we spoken i mean not only from a pers- professional aspect but i think we've more connected on lines of friendship uh, right now so uh, li- uh, when i reached out to you it was basically from a reference of my friend who also got through the final stage of watin and then he couldn't make it to the final go but at least reaching to that stage is also of a very good landmark uh, and apart from that i felt that uh, i had like references or maybe understanding of my essay from a lot of different perspectives so i sent it to couple of my friends to couple of my seniors but then the answer was that yes it might it it looks good but uh, there is maybe something that you can really add on but mm-hmm. what is that add on i don't really know mm-hmm. so once we interacted with you i think i got to understand a very bigger perspective to look at things and a new eye completely so if you are if you are evaluating my essay for the first time not knowing me that was the eye i was searching for till now that everyone had reached out to already knew me as an individual so maybe things that i had written was making more sense to them but some yeah. things that as you pointed out very correctly was maybe because you didn't know my background and my struggles or my achievements what really made sense to me you couldn't really make of what was really more important to me in the essay aspect of things which really need to brought out or bring out so some, that is really one place that you really helped me understand and maybe brainstorming uh, that part of little more to yeah. bring out clarity in my goals and my further visions and all of that so that is one thing that i really uh, want to say and second to all of the people who are going to work in the future is to uh, maybe give out a little more time to the application the essays so it is not just a tick box for the application that you need to do later after ap- application i realized that isb is actually just a years course and if i didn't have that goals and structures in my mind i would still be just fooling around in the college just to understand what i want to do paying so much there yeah. so it really it makes it a very important aspect that isb has done it and because it's a very 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 nicely very elaborate application process you actually have to think it through so that is really a really good add on that i'll be uh, give you from the start absolutely so, I, i think if you if you don't have clarity in terms of what you want to do it's it's very easy to get lost at isb 
Uh, right. And and that's not because of ISB. There's, there's nothing wrong happening through ISB there. It's just because it's a factor of that kind of and the number of opportunities that you get at ISB. There are so, right. so many opportunities that you will have. And if you are not sure of what you want to do, you will keep running in every direction that you find, right? right. And, and that is something that will really take away a lot of time before you realize you know, that the year is over. Right. So also, to be able think, to make the uh, most of it. Yeah. I think ISB really focuses on you and your journey as an individual. Because if you're focused towards your journey, maybe you bring out some more aspect into the class or the other learning environment that if the same herd group is going into maybe say consulting or any specific very mainstream group, if you are just party to that group, you don't bring about a new sense of learning to that group. Yeah. So I think that is something that ISB really focuses on. Makes, makes sense. Makes sense a lot. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Shivam. Uh, we, we also work together on the mock interviews to help you with your uh, interviews at ISB, right? Could you tell us a bit about how did that work out for you and you know, what did you, what, how did that actually help you with your ISB interview? Right. So I think first things first, uh, interviews are a little bit more about how the comfort level you get. So if you, the first interview that you do is with the people that are going to maybe select you or maybe reject you, then the level of anxiety or the level of pressure that you have on yourself is so much. So a round of mocks with anyone would maybe clear that a uh, cold eyes sheet key. Okay. Okay. It's, it's good. We just talking to each other. You are evaluating me. That's another aspect of things, but it is not that you're, you're here to grill me or here to maybe just take my case. You are here just to evaluate me whether I'm a suitable candidate for you. So maybe that really clears up things and uh, individuals that are connected with, uh, with your team for the mock were really, really good. It brought a lot of insights and a, with a very varied perspective. So I think people who interviewed me or took my mocks were also from individuals with a very different background. And my journey was completely, again, different to them. So anything that pointers that I could add on to my interviews while maybe uh, saying or pitching in, pitching in some answers, they could add really different eyes to it or say if I'm a person with a product development background, what would I feel of an individual who's coming from a family business background, maybe looking for a develop goal in a uh, business in, or a career in that field and what you understand of it. So that was really something that uh, added value uh, to my time and maybe to my answers, what I pitched to the evaluators at the ISB interview. Right, right, makes sense. So uh, let, let, let's move on to the final section of the interview where we have a few questions which we call as the rapid fire round. Uh, we just have a series of five, six questions which you would want to ask. And we are expecting not long answers, maybe one sentence uh, answers or so, right? So let's start with the first one. Uh, what is the biggest myth about MBA applications that you have realized after you know being through this journey of it? No, oh, it, it's not that tough. Okay, so so the myth is that it's not a tough journey. Yeah, it is tough, and uh, you need to give time. It's right. not a one day's thing. All right, makes makes sense. Uh, how important is the GMAT or GRE score from your perspective? Uh, depending on school to school, I think it varies. But or these after a decent score, I think it's just the application that values more. So uh, seeing different colleges and the elaborate application process, I think they really want to evaluate you as an individual only after seeing uh, the GMAT score as a certain benchmark that the individual is smart enough to maybe prepare and give that uh, push to study the academic aspect of things. Right. Now, what was the most interesting aspect, aspect of the entire application process for you? You know, uh, okay. GMAT prep, essays, application or or your mock interviews or, or interviews which which of these was the most I think essays. Uh, essays essays was really the most interesting aspect uh, majorly because it hel really helped me realize why I was going there right I mean, and what would you say was the most challenging aspect of the entire application process uh, essays again because I had to really ask myself where am I doing it right I mean at one point of time I was think thinking that whether this sort of investment is really really the right place really the right time uh -huh. uh, and uh, that saying yes yes okay because in the end it's you who has to decide whether you want to put it that much amount of investment time and everything and i think uh saying that to yourself with the confidence 
after realizing that yes you are doing you are on a right path is very challenging yes sir right uh one thing that you wish you knew before you started on your mba application journey that you know now uh that uh, app help in applications from like a consultant is not just a very bigger deal and just taken by a very small lot it is a very general thing and a very common thing and it really really makes a life easy okay. not in terms of just help but also realizing things yourself in your life i mean it's basically after 12th you go to a educational consultant asking that what should i do this is my area of interest so he lays down certain options for you i think mbas are also a bigger big much bigger part than that and it plays a very very crucial role because essentially anyone who comes for an mba is looking for maybe a job which may be like a very different career, career trajectory so understanding why you really want to do and where you want to do it from is very important aspect and consultants like mba consultant group like you i think you you really is the thing for me really really helped me throughout right and and just to understand so this is something that you did not want to do earlier before yeah i thought i mean maybe it is just an additional cost and what benefit I, you could give me i didn't know you as in mm-hmm. any uh, management consultancy yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for application so yeah. i thought of it just as a cost factor and maybe someone just telling me that this is something i can write mm-hmm. it is maybe like was a easier way to get to the same goal i didn't want to take the easier route but then right. i realized that maybe it's not just the easier route it's also the better route right right and i i am pretty sure we didn't make it easier for you <laughs> <laughs> well well that's another day maybe right but definitely uh, so, worth it i gonna, i'm going to say absolutely uh, that's that's very kind of you and and one final question that we have is uh, one piece of advice that you would want to give to future aspirants uh, uh maybe like just just think 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 through don't okay. do it for the heck of it like uh theek hai i want to just do my mba as a additional to my cv to get a little bit more of money in my career aspect of things that is not what an mba is you re- can really really grow from an mba so go in with that perspective and go in with that idea so you'll be a little more open to uh, giving more time to applications to maybe really thinking through why you're doing what you're doing uh, and why you're applying to that goal uh, why you're applying to that school or any mba college for that matter right it has been absolutely a pleasure to talk with you shivam and to take your perspectives this has been an enriching journey for both of us i think uh, through the application phase and again thank you so much for joining us congratulations on getting through to isb and i wish you a great year of transformation ahead uh, and and the best for everything that comes for you